Good morning. This is Michael, Deacon Michael Barrett, St. Thomas the Apostle. And uh, I welcome you to this prayer service that we're conducting this morning. This is the 28th week in ordinary time, Monday, the 12th of October, 2020. It's also Columbus Day. Uh, most businesses and uh, state and governmental agencies uh, are closed today. And uh, a lot of the schools are also closed today. So uh, uh, it's a day to celebrate um, the beginning of uh, America's history when Columbus first landed uh, in the United States in 1492. Um, he, he was not the first one to arrive here. Uh, the, the Vikings are some 500 years earlier, uh, but they didn't really settle here. Um, and so we owe this uh, heritage of this great country that we have to the uh, pioneering spirit that Columbus brought with him to America and uh, started the, the settlement in uh, the United States. So today we all celebrate that some uh, cities and counties and towns have kept the feast day, kept the uh, holiday, but renamed it to uh, Founders Day or, or some similar uh, organization. So we celebrate Columbus Day today. And I hope that your uh, celebration with your family is a fruitful one and one uh, that proclaims uh, Thanksgiving for all the Lord has done for this country. Today's uh, scriptural readings, I, I think are really significant and kind of gets us pointed in the right direction. And it starts out with the morning antiphon from Psalm 130. If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O oh King of Israel. Very comforting words, that sense of forgiveness um, for what we have done incorrectly. And, and, and that's given to us even before uh, we've committed the offense. So it's a great um, theme to carry around with you today. <clears throat> and as we begin this prayer service, this begins, we begin all things. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and with your spirits. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to celebrate with me today this sacred prayer service that will um, lift us up and uh, make some kind of meaning out of this crazy upside down world that we're living, and especially this pandemic that we're going through right now. So in, in preparation for this service today, I'd ask you to take a, a few minutes to calm yourself down. to take a deep breath and exhale it slowly. So just let a sense of calmness overcome you. And to be open to a, a state of um, meditative 
reflection so that as we read the words today and we talk about the message today that that message may resonate in every fiber of our being and allow you to absorb that to drink that in and to be reborn, to be re-energized, to be reaffirmed in who you are and what you are. For we are all children of God and we are made in God's image and likeness and we are made primarily for goodness the goodness that we can do, the goodness that's been implanted deeply within us and is our natural uh, inclination if we only let ourselves be free and let that goodness show forth in the way that we interact with other people, in the way that we invite other people uh, into the events going on in our lives. I'm going to read both readings today. They're, they're fairly short and they are connected. And there's a great theme going through both of these readings. The first reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by a freeborn woman. The son of the slave woman was born naturally. The son of the freeborn through a promise. Now, this is an allegory. These women represented two covenants. One was from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. This is Hagar. But the Jerusalem above is freeborn, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you barren one, who bore no children. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. I, for numerous are the children of the des deserted one, than her who has a husband. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are children not of the slave woman, but of the freeborn woman. For freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people were gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks signs, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Nivenites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation and she will condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nivena will arise with this generation and condemn it because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in both of these readings, we see uh, 
indication of discerning the signs. Throughout the history of the Hebrew scriptures and the New Testament scriptures, miracles, unusual events in the natural order, dreams, and encounters are identified as signs. In many forms, God's self-revelation continues. The world is full of significance. Part of our spiritual work is to learn to recognize it. Of course, it's possible to overread or misread these signs. Our capacity for projecting has been well documented by psychiatrists when they tell us we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. So we need interpretive communities to help us discern the signs that lead us towards personal decisions and larger signs of the time. Prophets are those who do this most reliably. They are the ones among us who look around and see what unfolding and then warn us. It may be given to any of us at any time to be the one who speaks the prophetic word, which so often rests on the painful question, do you not see? We don't. But we can do, but we can learn to reflect on encounters, accidents, dreams, statistics, and the day's news with an eye for what forces are at work and where graces keep happening. God is making manifest all the time, what we need to know. To watch for guidance is to live in expectation and trust that we are witnessing and accompanying and meeting and inviting all the time. Let's see if we can kind of bring that idea of signs that we saw in the readings today into our personal lives. Now, in the first reading, there was a sign of the free, uh, the, the, the free children born and the slave children born. One to the slave child, uh, the um, slave of Abraham, Hagar, uh, who was eventually uh, pushed out of Abraham's family and rose to create a, 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 the great Muslim nation, uh, a, a great religious nation. And from the free woman uh, who conceived in her old age beyond uh, uh, normal childbearing age when she uh, gave birth to Isaiah. And uh, Isaiah represented uh, actually uh, several different branches of religion. And of course, the, the Jewish religion and later on the uh, Christian religion. So Abraham was kind of like that guiding force and uh, uh, his descendants uh, formed uh, it was the formation of most of the religious movements uh, throughout the world today. And those are signs. The signs of free woman, the signs of slavery. And then, of course, in the uh, second, second reading, the, the gospel reading, they talk about uh, all these signs that Jesus had been doing. And, of course, Jesus knew how to interpret those signs. But unfortunately, 
the religious leaders at that time didn't have a clue. They wanted more signs, even though they had many, many given to them. And Jesus said, you know, that's it. I, I've given you enough signs. I, I'm not giving you any more because they don't mean anything to you. you. You don't grasp what that sign means. Now, if we look at today, the age that we're li living in, we, we're confronting this pandemic. There are signs there, but the important part of recognizing those signs is that we recognize the signs for what they are and not who we think they represent, who we are. That's kind of a, a, a hard place to be in. And many of us are experiencing um, depression, uh, experiencing uh, despair, because uh, these signs at first blush seem to spell disaster. But I don't think that's the case. I think God is giving us a message with each of these signs that come out of the pandemic era that we're living in. It, 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 it's really hard to kind of be able to identify that. And we need other people to help us interpret that. And uh, the readings talk about the prophetic uh, eyes to help us unravel that sign. Because it's hard for us to see a sign where um, a loved one is suffering from this pandemic. A loved one has been lost to this pandemic. And in general, to um, Watch all the suffering that goes on with this. And, and what kind of sense does that make? You know, as part of our baptismal commitment, we were anointed with the oil of chrism. We were anointed as priest, prophet, and king. Now, the prophetic role uh, is the role that is necessary to be able to recognize that sign and recognize it as a sign of uh, encouragement, a sign of uh, recognizing God at work in the world. But it's not an easy, uh, an easy task to focus on for us because we're kind of more relying upon how that sign affects us. And usually it's in a negative sense. So by virtue of that baptismal um, prophetic gift that is instilled in us, we each have the capability of discerning what God is telling us with that sign and, and doing it in a way that is uh, explanatory, a way that uh, is a new view of uh, God's interaction with us and in a way that uh, helps us to lift us up, to give us hope, to give us encouragement, and in general to recognize God at work in the world. 
Not easy. Definitely not easy. But, you know, we need to take a step backwards and recognize that every day in our own lives, we are constantly being reminded by the events that unfold each day, uh, the, the dreams that we have, uh, the encounters that we have, um, the chance occurrences. And rest assured, there's no such thing as a coincidence. All of this has been put into motion by our Heavenly Father. And so we are constantly bombarded by these events throughout the day. So one of the things you can do today is just step back and reflect, you know, maybe several times a day, maybe hourly if that's possible, or lunchtime, dinner time, uh, morning prayer, evening prayer, and reflect on what kind of events have occurred in my life? What's happened to me today? Who have I met? How have I interacted with that person? Who, who did we have an opportunity to be a prophet for? A prophet who helped unfold the secret involved with that sign that they had today and how we as prophetic messengers were able to help them uh, overcome that and give them an explanation that made sense to them and at the same time lifted their spirits. Now in this whole pandemic uh, era that we live in, we have to understand that we are not facing it by ourselves. The Lord is walking with us. The Lord is guiding us. The Lord is with us. So as we go through the events today happening to us, and the events that will happen to us tomorrow, the next day, future, future time, or even reflecting on past events. Sometimes, you know, you'll have an event and you'll, you'll wonder about it. What, what was that all about? It may not be until much later that the light bulb goes on and someone helps us to see that was God speaking to us. So in that speaking, be attentive to that. Be open to that. Let your, the Greeks have a great word for this. They call it a meditative state. And it's called the um, uh, metanoia and uh, it, it, metanoia means that we open our minds so that our hearts can be open and there's that great connection between the head and the heart recognizing what we intellectually see and then passing that on to our hearts, which is where the compassion and dignity of other people come from. So 
a heavy assignment for you to be that prophet that lifts up their people up. And you have within you the ability to do that by virtue of your baptism, the prophetic gift given to you. And now I'd like to um, conclude this prayer service with a prayer that Jesus gave us. And I'd ask you to say it along with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May his face shine upon you. And may that uh, gift of prophecy come alive in your heart and be manifested in everything you do within the encounters of other people. As we ask Almighty God to bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we depart today, I want you to um, go outside, breathe in God's creation. Let that liberate you. Let that be a sign to you, a sign of God's magnificent presence in our everyday life and how the beauty that we experience in encountering God in his creation lifts us up, makes us recognize that God loves us. God wants us to continue what we're doing, continue to be his instrument to bring about world peace, to bring about salvation for everyone, and uh, become closely connected to God by virtue of us drinking in God's creation. God bless you. I had to ask you to keep coming back to these prayer services. And may the Lord stay with you and be a real blessing for you. God bless all of you.